is it easier to start an agency when you've worked for agencies most of your career? The answer isn't a straightforward yes or no. Running an agency requires more than just doing the work of servicing clients. It requires building a profitable and sustainable business. Tara Lynn and her partner went from solopreneur to an agency owner in 10 months with 23 clients and quickly grew to a team of six people. In this episode, we explore the different thinking required to go from working in the business to on the business. And we talk through how the things that got them here won't get them where they want to go. Tune in. Welcome to the Small But Mighty Agency Podcast. If you're a creative consultant or agency owner who wants to know what the roller coaster ride really looks like to grow your business from one to many, you're in the right place. My guest and I pull back the curtains on the realities of growing and running agencies of different sizes and what it takes to build a team. And if you're anything like me, you want more than the highlight reel. You want to learn from the mistakes of others so that you can stop short of making the same mistakes. I'm your host, Audrey Joy Kwan. I spend my days as a coach and consultant to multiple six and seven figure agency owners. For the last seven years, I've been behind the scenes helping people grow, lead, and operate small but mighty agencies. Here at the Small But Mighty Agency, podcast will uncover what works and equally as important what didn't work to get these business owners to where they are today. Hi, Terilyn. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Let's start by having you share more about your agency. Hi, Audrey. Thanks for having me on. Uh, my name is Terilyn. I am one half of the creative direction and partner force behind Bold Lip Studio. We're a little agency here in Ottawa and we do branding and marketing comms in in the specialty of cannabis, but we also focus on some other grown-up fun avenues as well. We're both LinkedIn users. I've been leaning into the platform a lot more this year. I came across a post from you celebrating serving 23 clients in your first 10 months as an agency owner. Tell me more. Yeah, definitely. So we are coming up to a year of operations. So yeah, we're just in our infancy as an agency. And yeah, I was doing this year end cap of our successes in our first almost year of operations and doing that count and was surprised myself that wow, we've serviced so many amazing clients across like a variety of portfolios and projects. And a a lot of that had to do with a really solid network that we've been able to lean back on in this past year. People that we've known that we've worked with before, people that, yeah, just are in our circle who are really interested in working with us and supporting our new agency. So I think like of that 23 clients, only two of them were net new from last year from since we opened and the rest of them were were familiar to us. Tell us about your experience and your background. Why start an agency now? Yeah. So my partner, Joanne, and I have super similar backgrounds. I graduated from school in 2004. I'm from Toronto area and I've done my career as a graphic and graphic design as a graphic designer, working through agencies, in-house departments, freelance. I ended up in Ottawa about 10 years ago working for agencies here. My partner Joanne very similar. She's got experience on copy end. She worked at agencies throughout the UK and also landed in Ottawa about a decade ago. We work together at agencies, we work together freelancing, and our most recent like full-time career endeavor was with a big cannabis LP here in Ottawa, where we were able to lead these incredible creative teams on uh, dozens of brands, literally dozens of brands in this emerging market. It was incredible work, super, super satisfying. And unfortunately, as happens in cannabis, it was a little too big and it kind of exploded. We lost our job over like a 30 second Zoom call, which was quite devastating. (laughs) Um, So we were back, you know, into like a freelance ship. We both have freelanced before and we partnered with some success. But I think just having come out of A, the experience working with in cannabis and getting all of the knowledge of regulations, there's a lot to know when you're marketing in a highly regulated arena, and also having produced so many incredible brands with so many talented creative. We just felt like working just the two of us 
you know, joining other teams here and there was just not the scale that we wanted to be working on. We wanted to be doing bigger projects for bigger clients um, and leveraging all these skills that we walked away with. So, you know, we looked around, you know, the, the, the marketing field in Ottawa is fairly small. There's not a ton of agencies and there was nothing that really spoke to us as, you know, as female creatives, as mothers, as senior creatives. We just didn't see a place where we could land as our home. So we thought, Let's just do our own thing. <laughs> and here we are with Bold Lip. What's inspiring is how quickly your agency took off. I know that you and your partner have this great synergy. You have the design background and Joanne has the copywriting experience, which played a huge role. But what stands out to me is how keeping it simple made all the difference in the start. Tell us about the beginning. I can think of, you know, our first client is a healthcare company called Oxida. And when we opened, we, they were with us right before, right when we were opening our doors. And they were, a, they were maybe the catalyst for us pushing into the agency in the sense that they were a client that was a little too big to take on just the two of us. And, but we were able to when we wanted to. And so they trusted us very early on to do great work for them. We brought in some additional thinkers in our, and like our professional network. So we were able to bring on, you know, a strategist and some additional designers to pull it together for them. They're still a client to this day. We service them well. And in return, they've shared our name forward. And so, I mean, that network has just grown stronger. From one client to 23 clients, it's a big jump and all done organically. From the get-go, you tapped your network and had a niche. Your agency serves grown-up fun products like cannabis and craft alcohol and done in a way that challenges the stereotypes. But going from one to 23 is no easy challenge. People might think that running an agency would be easy because both you and Joanne have been in agencies. What has been your experience? I think all that knowledge has serviced as well in terms of actual production of work. We've obviously crafted our skills through agencies and in-house teams, you know, to an expert level, I would say. So like our, like if you're working with us, you're getting incredible creative output. You're getting effective marketing communications. <laughs> I think it's also helped us in knowing how to, we know how we want to lead teams. We've managed creative teams. We understand creative thinkers. We are creatives ourselves. And so there is value there that we've also benefited from with our experience. And lastly, I'm like off the top of my head anyways, it's like the processes in terms of you know, organizing your work, organizing a creative team, the briefing system, all of those things that like help us internally understand a question and create the output. Like we were able to hit the ground running and put those processes in place because we're so familiar with them. Anybody who's come out of an agency is very familiar with how work needs to come in and, and leave the shop, how to communicate internally, all of that. I think our our challenges have become clear in in terms of like a business development sense. <laughs> so this is currently where we are certainly refining things for ourselves. So I guess, you know, going back to our 23 clients and most of them based on referral, which yeah, it's we are very, very lucky to be in that position and to have been profitable in our first year based on those referrals. But how do we, so, so if you work with us and you know us and you've seen our work and you, you know the agencies we've worked with, you're familiar with them, there's a trust there, I think, in us so that is where those referrals come in. If you don't know us, if we're new to you, if you've never heard of Bold Lip, if you don't know who I am, you know, how do we, how do we let you know that we are capable? And if you're a client, I, th I think, I think we know how to communicate as an agency and what our experiences has been from an agency and what we want that to look like. But what does that look like from a client perspective? So that is, does that make sense? Like that's all new to us. <laughs> that's all new. Like selling our services through to somebody who's new to us is where, yeah, attracting new clients. Like we got the referrals. How do we hook those new clients on? How do we communicate our value? How do we communicate our pricing even, right? Like these are, these are things that we're, 
we're currently working to refine. When you've had the experience of working in an agency before, the doing part comes second nature, but the business development part might not. As you mentioned, packaging your services, pricing, and creating more visibility so that your business is sustainable, things that have to do with working on your business, like marketing, sales, and even messaging can be challenging. Totally. When we look like, I actually think it's on our website right now, but one of the things we'd, we said when we opened was like, we do great work, no BS. And even that, that statement to us is like from agency, agency life where there's just layers of BS that you deal with again, like even an agency, you know, the layers of politics and, you know, so even that statement is like, well, that speaks to us and our experience in agencies. What does that say to a potential client? Like that might not actually resonate. They might not actually feel like there's layers of bull. So for us, we're at this, yeah, like let's reframe our thinking. Let's still have like honest, transparent conversations with clients. But I do think we need to be packaging in a way that's just a little speaks more clearly to, to what what a client's really looking for, a potential client. It's normal for marketers to have a hard time figuring out their own message. It's the glass bottle analogy. When you're inside the bottle, it's hard to read the label on your bottle. And when you switch gears from solopreneur to an agency, you shift from selling what you do to selling what your company does. 100%. Totally. Yeah. There's a definite mind shift that I that I don't think I was expecting. I was I think I was expecting like similar mindset, bigger team, more capability, uh, easy sell. <laughs> when you're right, it's uh, there's more we're asking for more money, there needs to be more trust, there's more components at play. And, you know, even even like efficiencies in how we well, I'm, I'm, skip, I'm, I'm mixing messages here, but like how we currently we do basically like custom programs for each client. So we do custom proposals, custom solutions, custom everything, which also I think comes from, you know, the way you, I I have at least worked in agencies, like everything is super custom. But as a small studio, there's efficiency loss here. And that comes down to your business model. Do you want to have a custom everything or do you want a productized service agency where they get a limited but expert range of options and you have a standardized delivery process making it more efficient? Totally. And I think just with the scale of our team, so there's there's six of us and Joe and I are running the shop, but also very hands on the creative as well. So yeah, how do we just making sure that we are yeah, delivering efficiently and when we're creating a custom proposal, that could be a day's work with meeting the client or meeting the potential client, interview, discovery, building a custom proposal, delivering it. But like, like it's a chunk of work. So it's like, yeah, I think we're at a phase like a year in where it's like, is there a way to do this more effectively to win more proposals, but and more efficiently where, you know, is it is it a templated program that we can send out? Is it a similar package offering that we're we're giving to people? Is it a is it not always custom pricing and custom delivery? You know? Before we get back to the episode, I want to invite you to download the free Mighty Pod model. If you feel stressed that your business will stop growing when you stop working, the free download will show you a service model that can scale minus the overwhelm. Inside the PDF, you'll find a foundation for the Mighty Pod model. The Mighty Pod is what I've used to help creatives, consultants, and agency owners scale their service business to multiple six figures and beyond. If you want to stop spinning your wheels, lead and build a team that you love, break through revenue ceilings and create a sustainable business well to grow you need to do things differently because what got you here won't get you there so grab the free download for the mighty pod model go to audreyjoyquan.com forward slash free resource or click the link in the show notes right there in your podcast app back to the show you're at the stage of business where streamlining your services will have a considerable impact on growth. Having service delivery processes to rinse and repeat can make the service continually better and better because you get to improve it every time it's repeated. And it makes it easier for you and Joanne to be able to step out of the business if that's what you want. I think that's where we are today. Like, yes, yes, let's niche, let's communicate our value prop, let's you know, have streamlined processes, streamlined packages. Yeah. A lot of the work of going from solopreneur to agency is 
being able to build trust and attract the bigger clients. That happens through evidence of the work you do, clear messaging, and making decisions that help you stand out in a crowded marketplace. Yeah, I think, again, bringing up the theme of trust, like there's, I imagine, or maybe I imagine going into owning a business that I know that I'm good at what I do. I know my I know my team's very strong. I have an incredibly gifted team. We are great to work with. And like in my fantasy world, like everyone just knows that and knows us and hires us based on that. Mm-hmm. And that is not the reality. You do need to earn, prove trust, prove value, communicate value. These are the skills that I'm, I'm starting to learn. And yes, as we begin to, you know, formulate our niche and our value proposition and this framework around a process that is, you know, just articulating a process in a way that I can go to a client and instead of being like, oh, we do like awesome creative work, I can <laughs> like hire us, duh. <laughs> like, no, I can speak to or learn to speak to our actual process and why we are actually, you know, and like what, to yeah, stand why out. We're, to stand out and to differentiate us and to, and to do more proving that we are valuable because we are, at, I mean, part of being a bigger team versus freelancing is bigger projects, bigger money. So yeah, there mm-hmm. has to be the, the trust of service there. Terilyn, what have your sales been in the first 10 months of your business? Yeah. Our, first year so in 2021 and that was like a 10 month period for us was 350,000 around that what do you see for boldlip in the next few years so in our first year under the 350 we were able to hire three employees we've just hired our fourth employee and account manager in 5 years we would love to have a stable team of let's say 10 creatives so more designers, a couple more copywriters, maybe a couple account managers. We would love to, we're remote currently, we would love to have a little office. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I think we would love to, um, you know, be established, well-established, well-recognized in our area of expertise, in our niche and attracting top top tier client. Obviously, the profit growth would be excellent. And if we could, you know, there's dreams like, could we work on a four day a week model while being profitable? Can we have a charitable charitable component? Could we be giving some of our revenue to, to those who need it? You know, being in a position where we are all comfortable, where our team is all making excellent salaries, being treated very well, that we have some leftover to give to the community, like that would, that's the dream. While doing amazing creative work, like what could be better? Thank you, Terilyn. Before we wrap up here, what keeps you inspired and at your best? Yeah, I am an RGD, which is a registered graphic designer. It's an association here in Canada that you can apply to uh, uh, for your certification. And they host, they host tons of small webinars and little events, but they also do these pretty big conferences. So uh, there's the design thinkers that happens every year. There's one in Toronto and one in Vancouver. They have just fantastic conferences that attracts incredible, incredible talent from all around the world. And it's always inspiring. It's always inspiring to hear from other business owners and how they're operating, how other designers are staying, how other designers are staying inspired in their own craft and doing excellent work. Yeah, that would be what keeps me inspired. Thank you, Terilyn. Where can people find you and Boldlip? Yeah, you can find Boldlip at boldlip.ca. We will be on Instagram. We'll be on LinkedIn. I won't be on Twitter, so don't look (laughs) for me there. (laughs) But we're around the internet. You can find us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Audrey. Hey there, thanks for hanging out with me at the Small But Mighty Agency podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean the world to me if you hit the follow or subscribe button in your podcast app and share it with a friend. I'll see you on the next one.